Yes. All right. Court of order of the Board of Library Trustees for Tuesday, April 19th, 2022. Roll call, please. Trustee Gallo. Here. Trustee Metal. Here. Trustee Rule. Here. Trustee Smart. Here. Trustee Samari. Here. Trustee Sepplet. Here. President Sick. Here. All right, let's move on to public comment. Do we have any public comments? On the uh, Cook County Highway Tax Bill 2021 first installment property tax bill that was due on March 1st, 2022, under Harbor College Community College 512 Dalton, it has percent of pension and health care costs taxing districts can pay, and it lists 0.00%. Please do not recommend any students to Harbor Community College until they fix that problem. And also use your clout and leverage to end the tax increment finance district. Uh, that will free up government labor for other projects. It will free up cash for the rest of us to improve our own property with our own money. And it will take the money out of the tax increment finance fund bank accounts, which the banks use to invest for their own profits. Thank you. All right. Let us move on to the liaison reports. Friends. Hi everyone. Um, so we have the book sale coming up this weekend. So I hope to see many of you, friends, family, neighbors, um, spread the word. Uh, masks are going to be optional and um, this sale, we are going to be trying out a credit card reader. So that's very exciting. Um, we're now accepting donations, uh, Mondays, I believe it's 10 to 7, and then Wednesdays and Fridays, 10 to 4. Um, there's a sign on the donation box downstairs. Um, we are planning a um, fundraiser um, June 17th, I believe it is, the day before Father's Day. Um, and that is going to um, take place um, in and around the library. So look for more information about that. Um, Brian has been working on some ideas for the staff in-house coming up. Um, I forget exactly what date that is, but Mike, I think you know. May 13th. <laughs> May 13th, thank you. Um, and then I'm going to be presenting with uh, Mike and Debbie at ALA coming up on June 25th, yes. 20th, 25th, okay. Um, uh, and then the last couple things, um, we completed the elections for the friends. So we're going to have a new treasurer, Will Marsalek. Um, apologies if I mispronounced that. I haven't met Will yet. Um, and a new director, Mike Braun. Um, and then the last thing, we um, approved an overhead projector for Kids World. And we also approved a... Um, parent desk with kind of an attached uh, playpen. I think we saw some images of that last time. So approved both of those items from the wish list. All right, very good. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jen. Thank you. All right, let's go, thanks, on, to, let's go on to the foundation. Happy spring, welcome back to this tiny little room. <laughs> <laughs> so, these are the little seed packets that we yep. gave um, to the staff and the volunteers, uh, just in appreciation. And we put a little note with it this time because we understand that not everybody understands what it's here. So we're trying to educate people as we give them something for people. So what else are we doing? So our fundraising is continuing in support of the Ever Redwell. I think we've I think we've got that covered, John, so don't worry about that. I'm a little worried. You're still worried? I worry. Okay, well, you don't need to worry. You trust me. But I worry. Okay, all right. <laughs> so I'm just telling you. So we've also purchased um, two maker's tables, one for K through five and one for tweens that will, we actually ordered them because we were so afraid of the supply chain issues. So those will be coming in. The one for the Twain World weighs, what do you say, Mike? 483 pounds? It's up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Prepared, Gary? Okay. We're going to your back. 483 pounds. Uh, that, the, the one for K through 5 comes fully uh, filled with items for kids to start working right away. The other one does not. 
So we have allocated $1,000 requested by the staff to fill that out. So it will be ready and working when you're open. You're ready to open. Um, so our scholarship task force has continued to work. Um, we are close to finalizing our goals and our guidelines. Uh, as well as learning what's available in the area. We visited Harper and we visited Percy as an example of the 214 schools. And I mean, it's just amazing what is out there for young people to take advantage of if they want to go into a trade. So, uh, and we've also invited in two local manufacturers that have told us, here's what our needs are, here's what entry level positions will look like, here's what our perfect trade candidates look like. So we know as we go into funding our scholarship program, what to look at. We're going to, uh, we're going to move the standing, the task force to a standing committee this summer. We're getting close. One of the gentlemen who started out on our advisory team uh, and has been with us from the very beginning on the scholarship task force has agreed to be the chair of that project. He was in welding, he was a director of uh, welding for ITW. So this is a world he's very familiar with. He's just retired from ITW, so it's a good time to get it. So he's on board. We welcomed him last month as our new board member uh, to the, because that with res response with finances and money and the scholarship, we felt that that needs to be a board position. So that will become a new standing committee. Uh, and that gentleman is John Hartman. So I don't think he was. Greg, you probably, mm -hmm. You should have met him, Debbie should have met him, Mike should have met him at the advisory oh, event. Okay. Mm -hmm. Terrible um, so we haven't started any public comments about the scholarship program. In fact, we haven't even reported to our board because the guidelines and the criteria keep shifting. Dollar shift, criteria shifts just a little bit, but we've already funded our first two years. So we're really in oh, good shape wow. with that. And we haven't even gone out and asked for support. Yeah. So we're really thrilled awesome. that there's a need there and people were seeing that. Um, we are currently in the process of creating two fundraisers that will utilize the makerspace that will, some of our advisory team members have been encouraging to somehow monetize that. I know that that's not <coughs> what you do, but that's what I do. And so we're in the process of having had a great conversation today. Yeah, we're looking saying? to monetize. What? I'm just making sure you hear about the monetize. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. We've had a conversation. He's been yeah. encouraging me. So what we want to do is put two fundraisers together at least a year to support number one, our ongoing scholarship program, and number two, other initiatives through the library. That does not replace our annual field. That's space in place. But we're, I, I was encouraged after my meeting today, it was a dream that I walked into just to break this idea. And it looks like it's gonna come to fruition. We'll let you know more about it. When it does come to fruition, it will happen. I'll talk to Mike this week about it a little bit more, but it's a way to monetize the commercial space and bring some more attention there. With the popularity of the programs that we had over there, we can see that people would be willing to pay to sit in some of those seats. So I figured out how to do that. Uh, and lastly, some of you received today, I sent out to all of our donors the latest donation. A beautiful woodworking set from some people that live in the building that Debbie manages the crops. They were initial circle donors at $1,000. And uh, her father passed, had a, he was a woodworker, had this beautiful, beautiful set. And they offered to donate it. I went to Chris and asked if it was something that they would like to use. I know that they don't have a large woodworking component over there but he said it was something they were looking into so we had accepted or i gave it to chris last week and he has accepted that mm -hmm. inventory so that was a 625 dollar in kind donation so that's all i've got mm -hmm. any questions for me mm -hmm. mary andy yes. maria mm -hmm. yes. so we're going to actually write up our marketing person is going to write up a little story get in touch with mary and write up a little story that we have to share that's yes. So do you have any questions? Good job. That was yeah, awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Yep. And obviously there's being a volunteer appreciation week, you know, what everything you know the board does, you know, the foundation does and the friends does does and everything like that. It's all volunteer work. And you guys are all great. And without all of you and all the work you guys do, we 
and have a lot harder time doing what we're doing. So thank you. Thank you to your whole team. All right, let's move on to approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of March 15th, 2022. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve the minutes of the AHML Library Board for March 20th, or March 19th, 2022. Okay. okay, any comments, questions? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, that one passes. Let's go on to action item two, approval of the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting of April 4th, 2022. I move approval of the minutes from the Committee of the Whole for April 4th, 2022. Do you have any comments, questions? Do you all in favor say aye? Aye. Aye. Opposed nay, that one passes. All right, let's go on to item three, review of the financial report for the period ended March 31st, 2022. Okay, our real estate tax revenue totaled $5,472,143.24 for the month of March. Uh, one thing to note on real estate tax revenue that came to our attention recently is that the second installment property tax uh, bills for Cook County will likely be uh, sent as much as six months late this year. Um, so last year they were late, uh, but this year um, is a little bit different um, because that could potentially put those uh, property taxes, second half property taxes into the next uh, fiscal year. So uh, our finance department is prepared for that. Um, and we are consistent with the, how the village uh, is planning to handle that uh, as well. Uh, we do have uh, cash uh, reserves to um, cover that. We're in a good position uh, there. So um, there's um, no concern of uh, cash flow. Uh, the library received personal property replacement taxes in the amount of $49,886.95 this month. Our copier printer revenue totaled $3,118.52. Our meeting room fees were $100. Uh, collection fees for late items was $130. Uh, lost item charges totaled $996.79. Our uh, interest for March was $136.86. Donations totaled $328.91. Uh, the Friends of the Library reimbursed us for $1,586.97. And revenue collected for vehicle stickers was $186. Our makerspace miscellaneous revenue was $258.87, bringing our total revenue collected in March to $5,529,558.70. On the expense side, 25% of the fiscal year has lapsed, and we have expensed 24% of our total operating budget. The favorable, favorable variance uh, to date is $103,891, and 53% of the total annual capital budget has been expensed due to the replacement of the Miller Picking Unit this month. That is all I have for the financial report. Where are we at in regards to the integration of the village's new financial system? In New York But it's it's up for them, right? Correct, or is it not up yet? It's not up and running. Okay. It's still the project work. So okay. It's so still in the requirement stage. Yeah. Okay. So the goal live would be January. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right. Let's move on to action item four: review of the check register for the period of March thirty first, twenty twenty two. Okay. I have a number of checks to go through here. Uh, on page one, check 8318, or I'm sorry, 83165 to Arthur J. Gallagher Risk Management Services in the amount of $859. That's our workers' compensation audit premium for 2021. Uh, page two, uh, there are various checks to various staff in various amounts. Uh, those are reimbursements for the PLA conference expenses. Uh, that does include $3,187.80 to Mary Hastings. That was covering three employees' hotels uh, on her credit card. So that was a reimbursement. On that same page, check 83279 to Williams Associates Architects in the amount of $4,533.80. That is for the Kids World Redesign Architect fees. Uh, check 83234. Um, this is on page one and on page five. 
uh, no before. This is, totals $1,844.50. This is prepayment for 2022 and two months of 2023 for security awareness training. Uh, this is ongoing email security training uh, for staff and has been uh, extremely effective since we started that. It's a good program. Yeah. Uh, page six, check 83203 to FE Moran uh, in the amount of $748,000. $495.80, that is for our HVAC uh, unit replacement. On that same page, check 83191 to complete temperature systems in the amount of $7,939. That is for the replacement of a bearing assembly on the 1993 building pump. Uh, that is not the same unit that uh, was just replaced. That was a separate unit. Uh, same page, check 83196 to DeFranco Plumbing in the amount of $6,345. That was for a water uh, main repair. Uh, this was a water main break that happened outside the library in February. Uh, the water main broke on our property, not in the street. So unfortunately we were uh, responsible for repairing that. Uh, the Village of Arlington Heights Public Works Department did come and take a look at it. Uh, and if that break was in the street, um, they would have uh, taken care of it. So what is that on the other side of the sidewalk? Is that- considered? It was right outside of the building. the building. So yeah, so it was on this side the side of the sidewalk. Right. Yeah. I was well, I would be walking here the day yeah. that that happened. I was like, oh, yeah. that's not good. Uh, then on that same page, eight, check 83199 to Divine Signs, uh, the amount of $2,337.50. That is a 50% deposit for replacement of a damaged parking lot uh, ground sign. The total cost for the library to the library will be $4,675. And this is for one of those lighted signs um, out in one of the islands. Uh, this one in particular is the one that is near the veil entrance to the parking lot. Um, over the winter, a uh, car came in and it was oh. icy, slid and uh, hit the sign. Um, unfortunately, the driver did not have insurance, um, but we have spoken with our insurance about it. Uh, so that is what that's for. So it, it has been replaced, uh, the new sign is out there. On page nine, check 83163 uh, to the Arlington Heights Memorial Library. That is a American Express charge in the amount of $225. Uh, that is for online leadership training, build your management toolkit. That is for members of the circulation department. They're doing some online leadership training. On page 10, check 83202 to EBSCO Information Services in the amount of $4,545. That is a prorated two month extension of our digital subscriptions to various online products uh, before we start a new discounted subscri subscription service through Rails, uh, which requires a July 1st cycle start date and will give us uh, more services at an overall reduced cost. So we had to kind of bridge that gap uh, with that, um, that payment to uh, EBSCO. Also on page 10, check 83224. To Info USA Marketing in the amount of $9,750. That is for database renewal costs, uh, reference solution subscriptions for um, uh, for most of, mostly within 2022. Uh, does bleed over into 2023. The total uh, is $13,000. Um, so $3,250 of that is uh, prepaid and on page one of the uh, check register. And then last but not least, page 23. Check ProQuest on that same page. Oh, I'm sorry. 83252. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, ProQuest on the amount of $7,896.67. That's uh, also for database renewal costs, uh, 360 link and summon discovery service subscriptions. So that is um, kind of a, um, uh, a search that search, searches a lot of our databases all in one search box. Uh, that is um, also a, a subscription service leads over into 2023 a little bit. So the total for that is $10,303.33 is a prepaid on page one in addition to that $7,896. And then uh, on page 23, check 83181 to Business Solutions Group uh, in the amount of $6,488.50. That is for a 50% down payment for a security camera system at the maker place. So we have a security system over there, but we budgeted this year to um, install a camera system on there. So that is uh, that is 50% down payment that is scheduled or um, uh, yeah, scheduled to be installed soon. Any other questions on checks? Yeah. Do you have a motion? 
I'll move that we approve the accounts payable check register for the Arlington Heights Memorial Library of March 31st, 2022, in the amount of $1,872,523.28. Second. Any comments, questions? Anything? Okay, roll call, please. Trustee Gallo? Yes. Trustee Metal? Yes. Trustee Rule? Yes. Trustee Smart? Yes. Trustee Samori? Yes. Trustee Sutlet? Aye. President Zick? Yes. Okay, let's go on to the executive director's report. Okay, a few things to highlight in the director's report. Uh, on page one, uh, the library's purchased two Onyx Books uh, Leaf dedicated ebook readers. Um, the difference with these ebook readers, uh, we have a lot of different ebook readers here, but this one runs on Android and has access to the Google Play Store. It is much easier to use than some of the other uh, e readers that we have. And it uh, is um, compatible with many more of the uh, services. Uh, this one also has speakers on it, so you can listen to audiobooks on there as well. On page two, our senior and accessible services celebrated the 100th meeting of their phone-based book program series. Since the first discussion in April of 2020, customers have listened to selections from 39 different books on subjects ranging from nature essays to show uh, business memoirs and beyond. Uh, to celebrate the milestone, our SAS staff delivered party in a bag to each participant that included a commemorative invitation designed by the discussion's primary facilitator, uh, our SAS advisor, Janet McDonald, a keepsake pinwheel, a sparkling water, and a telephone cookie. So this was uh, a change in how we were doing this um, book discussion uh, group during COVID. Uh, and it was all phone based, so it was um, it was kind of a, it wasn't completely phone based, I should say, but um, it was um, online and phone based. So this was just kind of cool. Reached out to it uh, that demographic that um, may not have had the technical technical aptitude to be able to use it. Yeah, that's a really cool one. I didn't know yeah. about that, so I read that. It's a really, really, really neat, cool one. Okay, on that same page, our programs and exhibits staff brought Dan and Raymond's movie club a night. Uh, at the Oscars to 180 attendees via hybrid watch party format. The Hendrickson room was decked out with a red carpet, festival lights, and popcorn for in-person attendees to fully immerse themselves in the Oscar party experience. The evening's presenters expressed their gratitude to the library for accommodating both in-person and virtual audiences. So again, another thing that came out of COVID, you know, um, a lot of our programs we are, or some of our programs we're doing in a hybrid um, fashion. That's one that's uh, very popular. The Oscars ran late that time. Did yeah, they stay so. open until the end of it? I'm not sure. I think so. I think they stuck around. Did they talk about the controversy? I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm the sure they glossed right over it. <laughs> and they, yeah, they had to well, wait to see on, the, on the next one, the one that says, it says uh, opportunity for community members to get ready for Oscar night. And I kept wondering, did they teach them how to take a slap? Yeah. <laughs> like that? I think it happens Sorry, before. That. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, I think I that think was before. Days before. Oh, yeah. so they know, mm -hmm. like, they give them their picks. What's happening with all the Yeah. So, very good. Okay, then on the next page. Uh, an evening uh, with Madeline Miller. Our programs and exhibit specialists, or I'm sorry, supervisor, Megan Young, led a partnership event which connected readers across 32 libraries. A total of uh, 945 Illinois area community members virtually met Madeline Miller, uh, author of best-selling The uh, Song of Achilles and Circe. Mm -hmm. Of these, 83 attended from Arlington Heights. We were the second highest showing among all partner libraries. And the evening was recorded and made available for two weeks, which garnered an additional 562 views. Moving on to page four, the library's 2022 Sunday Musicale series kicked off on Sunday, March 13th with returning uh, players, the Sapphire Win-Win Quintet, who welcomed 66 attendees for a relaxing afternoon performance. In celebration of Women's History Month, the all-female quintet played a classical music journey through the work of women composers from the Renaissance to the present. Sunday Music Hall, still generously sponsored by the Friends of the Library, will continue monthly through December. I love bingo night, though. There's not enough bingo in the world anymore. <laughs> That's true. Right? 54 people? That's pretty awesome. That's pretty good for an you know, inaugural. This is something to look forward to. Right? Yep. Good prizes? Okay, on the next page, uh, page five, our info services librarians, Lev Kellermans and Mickey Camp compiled resources related to the crisis in Ukraine. Our info services advisor, 
advisors compiled a book list to include uh, on the webpage, which also highlights links and resources on how to help with refugee and humanitarian aid, as well as reliable news sources, current uh, events explainers, and fact-checking tools. In March, the page garnered 825 visits. Uh, the Village of Arlington Heights Youth Commission hosted a teen job fair at the Arlington Ridge Center on March 1st. Material Handling Supervisor Matt Williams and Human Resources Assistant Gabby Rojek represented the library, speaking with over 30 teens about paid and volunteer opportunities at the Arlington Heights Memorial Library. Teen Services Supervisor Alice Sun and Youth Services Supervisor Rebecca King hosted a parents table with resources for parents and teens. Okay, then on page six, the ESL Social Hour. Our ESL and Literacy Services tried out a new drop-in program called ESL Social Hour. It was created to provide library customers an opportunity to stop in for unstructured conversation, networking, and community building. A team of ESL volunteers who happen to be uh, English language learners themselves facilitated the group of nine participants. Afterwards, multiple participants remarked that it was a wonderful way for them to practice English and get to know one another. ESL Social Hour will become part of the monthly rotation. Okay, then on page nine, the meet, meet the Maker. Uh, the Maker Place hosted Maker and uh, Luthier Marshall Brunet, a maker of stringed instruments such as violins and guitars. Marshall went over the basics of guitar building and his 25 years experience as a second generation Luthier. Working with incredibly rare instruments, which he shared in his presentation, he also detailed his trips to Utah where he sourced trees to harvest wood for his guitar bodies his philosophy for both building things to last and respectful repair. Before the evening ended, he played a violin made in 1710. The program was well received on the rainy evening with 17 attendees. Where does he live? Uh, I do not know where he lives. He lost, yeah. Yeah, he lost I don't think so, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to take that violin very far. Yeah. Uh, then on that same page, I got to highlight the chili cook-off. Mm. Our Makerspace Culinary Advisor, Brian Basaggio, and Makerspace Branch Assistant Manager, Chris Kruger, represented the Arlington Heights Memorial Library at, and Makerspace at the Arlington Heights Lions Club Chili Cook-Off. Brian served a terrific batch of chili made in the Maker Place kitchen. While Brian was slinging chili, Chris took the opportunity to talk to community members about market, Maker Place equipment and services. So, so did we win? Cool. Yeah. yeah. So no. We did not win. We did not win. Fireman. I have to say, yeah. I stopped by a few times during spring break and it was hopping. All areas of the library were hopping and, you know, it was crummy weather, so that helps, but um, there was a lot going on. It was fun to see how busy it was. Yeah, it's picking up. Okay, then on the last page, I uh, just want to highlight some of those staff highlights. Our tech, uh, teen librarian, Evan Mather, began his term as a member of the 2023 William C. Morris Debut Award Committee, which honors outstanding books published by a first-time author written for teens, the committee will award and honor books at the Youth Media Awards in January of 2023. Our ESL and Literacy Services Coordinator, Tracy Karam, participated in the quarterly meeting of Refugee Services Consultation. This meeting provides a platform for agencies and organizations throughout the state of Illinois to share information regarding the physical, educational, and health-related needs of refugees and asylum seekers who have recently arrived in Illinois or for those who are anticipating to arrive soon. And then our community engagement liaison, Catalina Shin, was selected to participate in the My Library Is Rails campaign as one of their new advisory team members. My Library Is is a campaign to help member libraries tell their stories and demonstrate their library's value to stakeholders including current and potential library users, funders, government boards, uh, parent institutions, companies, colleagues, elected officials, and more. That's everything I have for the director's report. We're happy to answer any questions. I'm going to... um, looking at the refugee services, that's so interesting because we were just having a conversation that there are Ukrainian families coming mm -hmm. to Arlington Heights mm -hmm. and some of our local schools. So you know, hopefully we'll be able to offer some services to some of those people coming. Yep. So we're trying to get ingrained as much as we yeah, can. Yeah, I like it. That's great. Any questions? All right. Great. Thank you very much. All right. We are on to old business. Item five, HVAC replacement project. So I was reading this. I had to read this like three times. The engineering assessment done by Shelby Nut Construction in 2013 identified Miller Picking Rooftop HVAC unit 
as at or beyond its useful life. So nine years ago. Gary, thank you and your team for keeping this thing going. I'm <laughs> so happy to get that new year. Let's hold off for a minute now. Let's just say. But yes, we did work so long. Boy, it's, right now. It's, it's almost infamous now. The word Miller picking. <laughs> they literally never said a lot. They were on the roof doing stuff to keep it going. That should be the David Lee Memorial. No, we're, 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 we're going to have a conversation. Just, 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 give, just give it a minute. Give it a couple minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. Who's going? Okay, so I would like to invite Gary to come up. Uh, Gary and I are going to give you a um, just kind of a summary of the Miller Picking Unit Replacement Project. So uh, this happened very recently, and uh, we want to kind of give you guys an update as to how the project went, where we're at, uh, budget. Gary has some uh, pick, some pictures to go through. So, uh, Gary, you want to? Yep, I took a, I took a lot of pictures of this. Almost like you would take of your first <laughs> child or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I put them together to show you the the demolition of the old Miller picking unit, as well as the installation of the new unit. And there's some key differences, which um, will be very evident as I as I show you that differences in the way we'll. Uh, servicing the unit and things like that, the, the, you'll see. But uh, we'll start out with the demolition. Okay, so here's our Miller picking unit. Um, I was actually working here when they put this in, in 1993. Um, it was installed using a crane. And if you can see the seams on the unit, uh, there were seven sections that they just dropped on the roof and bolted together at the time. Um, when they first started the unit up, it was so loud, it was ridiculous. We got complaints from the, the neighborhood and everything. So that's why um, the area on the left-hand side, that screen needed to be built uh, to basically stop the noise from the unit. Um, the demolition of the unit did not uh, go the, the way I thought it would go with the seven sections being uh, just removed and, and taken off. They actually had to take it apart piece by piece. Um, they used cutting torches and uh, in one of the frames, in the frames coming up, there's actually a boom lift that they use to load up and and taken. It was very time consuming and tedious. They, they really had to do a lot of work to do it. Um, uh, so that's the boom lift. They would just load up. They would just take all the things in, in that little of, of loads. So it, it took a long time to do. And, and tedious. And the week this happened was like the worst weather. I mean, there was rain, sleet, everything. I, I don't think it didn't rain one day. And it was, it was really cold. But they got through it. And um, there's uh, another picture of the boom lift. So the, this is the back of the unit. I just got a little closer thing. If you just note how big, that's our return fan. Uh, and see how big the, uh, the blower section of it, it's, it's, it's like gigantic. And, and the whole thing of the Miller picking unit, it's all built on a big scale. Like all the components are, are big. So pretty much everything on there, if something needs to be replaced, you gotta get a crane in here to do it. Because the things were so heavy and, and large scale. Uh, they're getting there now. They're almost, uh, they've almost got everything that they can with the boom lift. Then they had to bring a crane in. Uh, the section that the guy's standing on right there is the condenser section. So the part uh, directly to his right that's sticking up houses the condenser fan motors. And there's three big condenser fan motors, which I'll show you a picture of later. Um, but the heavy stuff, they had to take that. It was kind of a medium sized, decent sized crane, but a medium sized crane to get up the building. Okay, this is uh, with the unit completely gone. This is what they call the curb. So this is, is almost ready uh, for them to just drop the new unit on that because the, the new unit was built to fit exactly on, the, on this curb. If you remember when we were talking about this project, one of the reasons we went with this company was because they could custom build it to fit on these curves and not have to 
rebuild any of this, we were able to uh, have them custom build it. One of the other uh, ones that we were looking at earlier um, could adapt to this, but it would overhang the building by what? Right. Six yeah. Feet and there was gonna, they would need to put an adapter on. The thing would sit up higher, and uh, I, I think this this thing looks great up there. And I'll, I'll get to that in, in a couple of minutes. Um, so here's the installation. Uh, so here's. I cry picture when it first <laughs> when it first showed up. Yeah. Yeah. I know a little bit here. You got some pictures. <laughs> but yes, that's when it first showed up on Euclid. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no. this is so proud. Let's just show you. Well, I just want to show you how big the thing is. I mean, it's, it's gigantic. So all those doors are different sections. You got it. Return fans, supply fan filters, uh, there's a heat section, but all those things are contained in that. So that's pretty much the guts, the guts of the unit. Um, so it's just before we move on, so this is this is what half of it, right? That's and one third of it. So one third. this unit came came dropped in three sections. It's condenser section, this section, and then the vestibule. Yeah. So we were in the vestibule. I went and, and took a look at this uh, when it was after it was running and everything. So Gary was showing to me and you opened one of the doors, you know, it's running. It, it's like, I don't remember exactly how, if it was it was uh, blowing out or sucking in, but it, you open the door, it's like, oh, maybe not that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite a system. It's it just, is really, when, you, when you see what some of the components look like, it's, it's very impressive. And um, I, we work with a few different companies that do HVAC work, and even our controls person, they all say seasons four is like the Cadillac of. Uh, the Mercedes, even they, they say this this unit is great. Where was it built? Uh, this thing was, I believe, in Atlanta, is what, where the thing nice. came from. So, this is the vestibule. That's where, you, if we did not get the vestibule, um, all those doors that were in the previous frame, you'd have to access outside. I mean, during a snowstorm, if something's wrong, you'd have to. Mm -hmm chip the ice away and try to open mm -hmm. those doors up. So that's why it was really important to get the vestibule because uh, you enter through one door and then you've got everything at your fingertips inside there. This is the condenser section. So like your air conditioner at home, you've got the condensing unit sitting outside. This is uh, the one that uh, goes with, with the seasons four unit. And it, it took them forever, those louvered um, units that they had, they were shipped separately and they had to install them all um, individually. And I think there's there were like eight or nine of them and the things weighed 250 pounds each. It took them six hours just to, to do that. And before they even got any, got the hook to, uh, they had a crane sitting there waiting for them to do that. So I'm sure they didn't like that, but uh, that is a commencing unit. Um, yeah, this is it being lifted off the, uh, off the truck. We had, we had so many semis, but there was just, the road was completely closed. This is the best deal. That was the last piece. So the condensing unit went up first. Um, the unit with, with all the machinery in it went second, and this was the third one. There it is being lifted. I'm like, please. Wow. <laughs> but if you look at this thing, the, the the wires, you know, you think that that's awfully thin to be able to yeah, hold this that much rash. weight. That's a crazy amount of weight. And um, our engineer was out before this and said, oh, did you ever see the uh, YouTube videos of catastrophic uh, <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't watch those. I don't want to see anything like that. Engineer failures? Yes. And then that, there's a close-up of the crane. But it, that was a pretty decent-sized crane. That, and the guys who were working on this said that this was the biggest rooftop unit they ever ever wow. had, for sure. Hmm. Wow. This is backing up a little. That's the unit with all the, the equipment and everything. Okay, the differences. Okay, so here's the, the miller picking unit, the, the view we, we've come accustomed to seeing when we drive up in the parking lot and everything. We've got the uh, the screening around it for, for sound. And then you've got the, the seasons for you. And so when I, when I first look, looked at this, I'm like, the thing looks nice. I mean, we were even like, is that the screen on the thing? So um, it wasn't, but I, I reached out to our engineer and I, I'm like, why do we, do we really need a screen with the louvers and everything out of there? So he reached out to the uh, village planner and the village planner took a drive by, 
took a look at it and said, no, you know what, you're good with, with that. So that, that saved us having to put the screen around the unit. They did ask um, that we paint this little part here. Oh, yeah. Because they wanted it to match that. But other than that, they were, um, we didn't have to do it. So this is one of the Miller picking compressors. Um, and there's the Miller picking unit and why it was such a problem. And we had two gigantic compressors like this. Um, to replace one of these, you not only have to get a crane to pull the compressor out, you've got to get a crane to take the condenser fan motors out to get this out. So that, that even makes installation of it worse um, and more time consuming. So that compressor is probably five feet long, maybe three and a half feet wide. I mean, it's, it's gigantic, it's, it's big. And this is what Gary and Christy were nursing along for the last wow. few years. Yeah, you can see it's starting to freeze up there, so that's not good. Okay, this is the new unit. So it's really, there's nine smaller compressors. So if we ever had any problem with any of these, you don't need a crane, you just, somebody would come, uh, you know, could be lifted with a, with a pulley or something like that onto the roof. You don't have to do all that uh, rigging and stuff to get them up. Um, also, if with our Miller picking, if one compressor went out, which we, we had trouble with one compressor having to reset it all the time, you've only got half cooling. With this, you've got so many stages, different compressors running. Um, there's diagnostics that'll tell us if it's running or not, but if one compressor went out, it's not life or death. We'll, we'll still have cooling. Gary said he could just throw one over his shoulder. I could totally do that. I'll, I'll throw one up to Mike. He'll, he'll be up on the roof. I'll just toss it up to him. What but, is the life expectancy of this? It, we should get 30 years out of this. Yeah. That's that's the, uh, the engineering uh, recognition of how long a unit you know, like this should last. And this technology, these compressors are scroll compressors, quieter, they're more efficient. Um, and, you know, it's getting so easier to... Yeah, it should no, make nowhere near the noise that the other did. Okay, this is a motor. One of the condenser fan motors from the Miller picking unit. And if you look, I just put the Kleenex box on there to show you how big this thing is. I mean, it's you can't put this in your form with it. So there you are, you need a crane that's uh that's usually pulled up by that little loop on there. The that Kleenex box was for Gary. <laughs> 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 So that's the that's one of the fan blades, and there were three of those. I so I, I leaned it against the garbage can just to give you a perspective on how big this thing is, and that's one of the reasons why it made so much noise. You've got three giant propellers running, um, and you know that's that's one of the problems with the unit. Is that hanging over your bed now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it is. Ceiling fan. The bedroom. Get a ceiling fan. Now. But the thing is, every time she's either I either I I went up there or one of the guys did. You got three of those, like right over your head, like yeah. you know, and you're like, oh my god, you know, every time you reset the thing, so it's, it gets a little harrowing sometimes. Wow. Now this is what the unit looks like now. This is the seasons four, so they're all smaller fan motors. There's there's probably I, I think there's either 15 or 18 of them, but there's there's smaller ones. They're they're more comparable to what you would have um, in your house. So it's not a train. You wouldn't be a train to do this or anything. It's something that could be service. Um, this is, I think I showed you before, that's the supply fan for the, um, or that's the return fan for the Miller picking unit. And these are the fans for the uh, seasons four. So they're, they're a lot smaller. Um, you probably can't tell by the picture, but there's, there's actually four of them. There's two on the top and two on the bottom. But it's all it's all very nicely laid out. Um, it's not some giant blower. If it's nice clean, yeah. If the fan went, if 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 the return fan in the old unit went out, either the supplier return fan, you've got no air. At least you you've got four fans going here. There's there's a redundancy that that can keep things going. Uh, this is the vestibule uh, that I'm so glad we purchased. The uh, the floor is all all very nice diamond plate. On the left hand side are the doors where you can get to service the equipment. Like I said, if we didn't get the vestibule, this would all be on the elements and we'd have to, it, it makes it servicing it difficult, especially in the winter or when it's raining or, or things like that. 
And this is a picture of the unit that's just a plate from it. Uh, we're, we're almost done. It, they, they still have some things to do. Um, we've had such cold weather. Um, we still need to charge that compressor for it. It's just been too cold for them to do that. They need a load on the system to be able to do it. Um, but they, they need to do that. They need to do the stairway up to the thing. Uh, and then basically some tweaking and have the factory come out and, and make sure everything's running the way it should. So then the fun part. Uh, yes. 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 Talking about the fun part. Yeah. So this is this is what was approved um, by the board uh, for this project. So the base bid was eight hundred eighty-seven thousand uh, dollars. We figured a ten percent contingency of eight thousand seven hundred dollars for the total for the base bid or nine hundred seventy-five dollars, nine hundred seventy-five thousand seven hundred dollars. And then we added the alternate um, for the humidifier, the nineteen thousand seven hundred for that with a nineteen hundred seven dollar contingency. Bringing a total estimated project cost of nine hundred ninety-seven thousand three hundred seven dollars. Our actual cost ended up um, coming in quite well. Uh, our the replacement of the unit was eight hundred eighty-seven thousand uh, dollars. We will be getting back a thirty-two thousand dollar one hundred thirty-two thousand one hundred fifty-five dollar credit because we don't need the screen screen for the outside. So. Um, and as of this point, we do not we do not need the contingency. So the one thing that we may need contingency for is um, if we need to bring in some external uh, or standalone AC units if it gets really warm before they can charge uh, the system. That's the only thing that uh, that would still be outstanding. Am I right? Yeah, it's in my conversations with uh, Effie Moran. It, it didn't seem like they were going to charge us for it, but. Just wanted to let you be aware. We do have the book sale coming up this weekend. Mm. It's supposed to be eighty. Yeah, eighty. Yeah. 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 And and there's not there's not a couple form dates for that. Oh, right. And then coming in and charge. So we're in a little bit of a pickle there, but that would be the only thing. But it sounds like they're gonna cover the cost. Project went really well. Uh, thank you for appropriating money for it. We we all appreciate it. Cool. So overall, uh, we came in at eight seventy four. 545, which is about $123,000 on the budget. Fantastic. David, Uno. And is, there a, is there a um, uh, warranty for X number of years or something? Um, there's different, it's hard to answer because there's different amounts of warranty for different it's components of it. Yeah. Um, like the heat exchanger for the heat would have X warranty, the right. fan motors would have a different warranty, the compressors yeah. would, but we'll get all that documentation. Yeah, yeah. Just components. Yeah. Well, and what I was going to say too is I was wondering, kind of looking at the financial dashboard, as we've all seen with our own houses or apartments, commodities have gone up in terms of, you know, we are lucky we bought that this year. Right. Yeah. It seems like it's more efficient, and the extra money that you saved perhaps could be used yeah. for higher gas or electric costs, right? Yeah, it would be 50% higher this year, I can tell you right now. I mean, it's just the way it's parts awesome. and, and components are going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you do with the old one? Yeah, but trash yeah. recycled probably is good. Yeah, definitely recycled. Not going. In the backyard here, you see the old one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
and the Friends of the Library and Library Foundation are exempt from this policy um, because we're, we're covering that in the, um, the ability for uh, library administration to determine best use um, or space for solicitation. So that's covered. Um, so those were just a couple of things that our attorney had recommended after the fact. Why do we have to change it to recommend it? Yeah. I'm sorry? Why do we have to change this? To because if we require it, then it is um, kind of infringing on people's First Amendment right to be able to solicit on public property. And therefore, if we require that uh, in advance, um, we may have a challenge there. It makes no sense since we've had a no solicitation policy yeah. here forever. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand what in the landscape has changed that now says we can't have that. Because we're probably because we're requiring it in 72 hours in advance. Um, and if you look at the original, so they are required, they were required to notify the library's business office in advance, but we don't specify amount of time. So we did have a lot of people that would come in, stay on a Saturday morning and say, I'd like to um, you know, set up a table or something like that. Uh, and in the original policy, staff were able to just say, yeah, go ahead. In this new policy, we were making it, we're giving, we're requiring that 72 hour notice um, to be able to have the administration approve, right. taking the onus off of the frontline staff to have to do that. But now, but now if you're saying it's recommended, you're, you're, you're providing right. a loophole that exactly they, right. they, they, they have tried to a loophole, they don't even have to do it. Right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's what our whole point to wanting to change this. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm not that. I would like to go back to Rich Okay. Yeah. Uh, Richmond, Mark Richmond, our, our library attorney. I would like to go back to him again. It is. I mean, it's really up to the board. If you, I mean, if you wanted to keep it required, we could. Um, we just may have a challenge there. If, you know, is we may be. Well, we put it on the website. Mm -hmm. We put it on a bulletin board. We make this available at all the help desks and with the staff that answer phones. Well, that's a hollow challenge. If you're saying 72 mm -hmm. hours, well, then the person has to wait 72 hours. We're not sure. denying them privileges, we're just postponing it. Right. So, is this, I mean, that's, it's, 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 yeah, there's, I, it, it, is the, 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 the risk issue. here is not. Is the issue, though, that we are a public entity as opposed to a private entity? Yes, because. It, it goes back to that First Amendment and giving people the ability to solicit on where a public entity, they they are allowed to do that. It is up to us as to where they do it or where they, they don't do it. And in this policy, we do bring it back to the safety, um, you know, for entrance and exiting the building. And, you know, that's really our impetus for changing this because we were having people set up in the garage and it was impeding uh, traffic flow, uh, pedestrian traffic flow. Can I just make a request, President? Can we have Mike go back to our attorneys and is there a specific case law that they're using to reference this? I would like more background before I arbitrarily just vote to approve or just approve this. Yeah, I, if nobody else has a problem, then I don't have a problem with that. I, would, want to understand I, the rationale. I would also suggest what are the other government bodies, you know, around here? What, what, is, what is Village Hall? Yes. What, you know, what, 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 are their, what are their requirements too? Okay. Mm -hmm. or, or even not using the word required, engage in solicitation, an individual or group must seek approval to the library's business office. Maybe yeah. using that yeah. terminology yeah. Okay. rather yeah, than good. shall or may, it's mm -hmm. must. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Any other comments? I got, um, well, actually, I got two things. I just want to make sure, too. Um, one, it's going to be picky, but I just want to make sure. When it says panhandling is prohibited, is everybody confident with the term panhandling? We don't have to define that out exactly what it is that they're doing. When they're doing that, it's best, you know, aggressively asking for things. And is everybody okay with just the term panhandling? Okay. So I, can, I can define it if you'd like, if we're bringing it back anyway. Go ahead and add. Can ask about it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just find yeah, so it. it needs to be defined. Yeah. And then, you know, we talk about solicitation includes activities such as blah, blah, blah. You talk about posting yard signs. We are a polling place, correct? How does that get affected? Or does it not get affected? 
there's there's a certain there are, number of feet that you have to be away. Right. But yeah. that, that, that's from like the polling. It's from the state of Illinois. Yeah, the state of Illinois, right. The election law. So so we're following seems like when I come out here, there's I mean they're 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 right up against the library. Right? They so have to be far right? across the street. I can't remember. It's like 250 feet, feet or something like that from the, the front entrance. Okay. So uh, from we, any entrance. From the entrance of the room for the Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the entrance of the room, room, right? It's not from the building, room, yeah. So right. it's like the cardinal room, that door, different. right? right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that would, of course, override any of this. Okay, okay, I'll bring that back to committee of the whole, yeah. or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. okay. Good comments there. Um, so we're done with that one, right? Yep. All right, going to new businesses. Uh, action seven seven resolution honoring the service of library volunteers. Okay. Resolution twenty two dash zero one honoring the service of library volunteers. Whereas National Volunteer Week is an opportunity to recognize and honor the many individuals of all ages who lend their time, talent, and voices to make a difference in their communities. And whereas National Volunteer Week will be celebrated in public libraries throughout the country and Cook County and all nonprofits therein from April 17th, 23, 2022, or April 17th to the 23rd, excuse me, 2022. And whereas library volunteers in our community are an integral part of the daily operation of our library and their acts of kindness remind us that we all have a role to play in making our communities stronger. And whereas in 2021, Arlington Heights Memorial Library volunteers provided over 13,000 hours of service in a variety of long-term and short-term commitments. And by the way, that averages out to 250 hours a week. That's a lot of hours. That is amazing. That is amazing. Whereas volunteers show their dedication to service to the community by assisting students with English or technology skills, connecting people to their family history, ensuring customers have access to materials at the library, senior center on the bookmobile, or delivered to their homes, sorting donated books to raise funds or working behind the scenes. And whereas volunteers are passionate about the Arlington Heights Memorial Library, the communities it serves, and therefore be resolved that the Board of Library Trustees recognizes and sincerely thanks library volunteers for all they have contributed to the library and to the Arlington Heights community. And furthermore, be it resolved that the board does hereby proclaim April 17th to the 23rd, 2022 is National Volunteer Week and thanks the volunteers who support and enhance the Arlington Heights Memorial Library. We have an action for acceptance. I'll move approval of the resolution was read by President Sick. I'll second. second. Any questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 And that's one <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, <clears throat> on to other, excuse me, I gotta drink something. Um, got down here honoring the life and service of David up when I, and I brought this up at this particular time. I thought it was a really good time period to, for, for, for us to try and just, you know, David was on the board, what was the date? Since 1983, and he was on like numerous times, 1983 to 1991, then took some time off. 94 to 95 and then 2005 to 2017 he was on the board when i joined and for for, for those of you who knew him, he was just a, he was just a cool guy you know he's one of those guys who always had a story had a great conversation about something that was going on he'd get a little smile at times you know when he when so he was going to say something and he knew it was going to be interesting and he'd take his glasses and he'd take his glasses and he'd take and he'd take his glasses off and uh you know fantastic guy so what I got thinking is, is you heard we talked about the Miller Picking Unit. One of his things was the Miller Picking Unit. I mean, he wanted that thing replaced from the day that I got on the board in 2013, you know, when we first heard all that, he was constantly talking about it. So I don't know, you know, we had talked about giving him what the plaque off the Miller Picking Unit, you know, if it obviously passed before we, before we could do all that kind of stuff. I think one, we could still present that to his family, you know, get it in the, in, in the right way to do it. And two, and Deb, you kind of brought it up before. Do we actually dedicate this new unit as the <laughs> David Unit, the David Unit the Air Filtration Unit, or, or whatever we want to call it or something yeah, like that? It's a million dollar asset. Yeah. 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 It, it, love it. It. It's about him. Absolutely. Absolutely love it. So is that crazy or do we put together a motion? We do that for the for, for the next board meeting and we and we say that? 
Yeah, that'd be a resolution. What would it be? Yeah, you give them. Yeah, I think a resolution would be classy because that could be given to the family, yeah. and then you give them the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's, he's we better check it out with Gary first. Though. Hey, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. Um, okay. Any other other? I have an other. I just wanted to kind of circle back. I did communicate with Rails um, regarding a board position. Their elections were like about a week and a half ago. Um, no, they weren't. The, well, the I think the closing of the application. Mm -hmm. yeah. Closing of the application. Oh, sorry. Because we yes. haven't gotten the vote yet. Yeah, we okay. haven't gotten the ballot. Yet. So um, at this point, that did not work for me because you have to be at the meetings in person because you have to be at a site. And the meetings are from one to four on Fridays once a month. And when I'm teaching, I cannot like take off to, to go Zoom a board meeting. But Mary Witt, who's the director of marketing PR, um, you know, I expressed interest in getting involved and she was gonna speak with Deirdre Brennan, who was the executive director. And, you know, I explained what my background had been and that I was interested. So um, I'm hoping to do a committee or something. Oh, so I'll find just, something for yeah, you. Yeah, I just want to ask you Anytime you say yeah. you're interested in yeah. 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 the that time just didn't work for me at this point. Yeah, but it might in the future. So. Well, it's curious that, that that time exists because it precludes anybody who's working. Yeah, it really does. It's by design. Found yeah, that by design. So it makes it retire. And then they complain they don't have volunteers. It's much easier when we have it. I do think the library system. They were in the evening, you know, and it was only right. nothing really nothing sweet. I would recommend though that perhaps we um keep our eyes out for when the next trustee forum is, which will be at IOA probably. And it would be probably good if we could have a quite a presence of that this year. You guys I, I I watched I zoomed yeah. and watched yeah. it. Right. Yeah. I would because I believe it's it's back in where is Ila now? Back in here? The uh, Ila yeah. conference was now. Yeah, it's back in Rosemont. Yeah. So it's oh, easy to get for us. Yeah. Yeah, October. Right. October, right? Yeah. Right. Maybe I would just suggest it. Because yeah. we did confirm next year I would So time for replacement. It's time for you. Fine. Very good. It's time now. Great evening. Thanks. Anything else? I uh, just want to wrap, remind the board that um, myself, Debbie, and Jen Burrell from Friends uh, will be presenting at uh, ALA uh, in June. What date is that? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> what, no, what, what, what is the guys presenting exactly? We're presenting on uh, the um, building a future with the Friends, the Foundation, and the library, and how working together, uh, and we're going to be talking about the Maker Place as well. And how that relationship helped to enhance uh, that project. Do you know what time your presentation is? It's 10 o'clock. I believe so. It's, a, it's a, one of the president's presentations. Excellent. Which mm. is a big deal. Kind of. I was shocked, actually. It's a, it's a good gig for us. We're very excited. Yeah. So it'll be a great opportunity for us to highlight the makerspace, highlight our foundation, highlight our friends, and um, and that's, how that is together. trustee day for ALA, just so you guys are aware. That's the day when trustees are supposed to go. If you've never been, it's actually, I would suggest to see if you could stop by because it's actually quite an amazing day. So last year we got to go to the Library of Congress, just so you know. It's pretty cool. Anything else? Washington, D.C. Well, hard to stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, take one of those discount flights. You'll be in and out of Rockford. I don't know. I'm just flying in and out of Baltimore every other week. They haven't announced it. They haven't announced it. I don't know. As far as we know, they, yeah, they announced PLA's virtual mm -hmm. report pretty late. Mm -hmm. They did. They changed their mind. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And it wasn't cheap. Okay. Anything else? All right, do we have a motion for adjournment then? I motion that we adjourn the meeting of the library trustees of the Arlington Heights Memorial Library uh, at 8.05 p.m. Second. Second.
Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay, and we are done. Mike, I have one other little announcement. It's not official business, but they are looking for volunteers uh, to help pass out the signs for Memorial Day Parade if anybody is going to be around Memorial Day. You know, the little we support the troops, the vet signs that they give out. They give them up before. Before. Time when people are yeah, sitting there and they, uh, they pass them out and then the veterans go by, you know, sometimes Arlington remembers. Yeah, Arlington remembers, yeah. 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 Trustee Schwinbeck's in charge.